go. All right. Welcome back. Round two. Well, they don't know it's round two. We just recorded about 10 minutes of an episode just for me to realize that I never turned on Darcy's mic. So, so round two. trying again. Tell us what we're talking about today, Kyle. All right. So we are talking about what I have called the five steps for a successful, I'm going to say program adoption. Although initially I wrote this for strictly like a, a software solution, but this works across the board, whether it's a new product or service you're introducing, a new software solution you're introducing. In today's global economy, quality matters. Benjamin Franklin once quipped, the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is forgotten. Quality Matters is here to talk about all things quality. So whether you're looking to improve your business, getting ready for an audit, or dealing with failed inspections, tune in, check us out, then get back to doing work that matters. Software solution you're introducing it's key no matter what. You're doing something new, good steps to go through. Okay. And I reviewed the steps. Yes. And I concur. All right. I agree. So first one is ensure your support teams are part of the process. And if you listen to our last little mini series, we've talked about people, 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 and relationships. And one of the things we talked about was knowing who's good at what. Now, as much as we talk about people, I just have to wonder if there is a Terminator-type situation in the future where AI takes over the world. Are they going to be really mad at us for not including them in this? We'll be gone. It's fine. That's true. Okay. So <laughs> you have to have a support process in place. And so the example I'm going to use here is years ago I did a large AutoCAD and SolidWorks uh, deployment. We had purchased kind of onesie twosie licenses, and we were running into problems with multiple engineers needing access, you know, to AutoCAD, and it's too expensive to buy it one license at a time. So we did this big group volume license with like so many shared and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. In any case, we had like twenty engineers that needed access to the stuff. It was a very costly, large project. I had to build a whole dedicated server just to host everything. <laughs> It was a mess, and it turned into a complete mess for about a month because I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder at the time. And This our, is our, where I will choose to be quiet. <laughs> um, and I was pretty good at AutoCAD, and I had been a resource for some of the engineers to, to come to when they had questions mm -hmm. about this, that, or the other. And I was also the IT guy, so great. That'll work great. Um, yeah, not really. I, I made myself the sole support team and I still had a job that required 50 hours a week anyways. Outside of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't go well. It did not go well. I, I made a lot of people mad that month. And you realized after the fact that there were people you could have used it yes. for support. Used it. Yes. Used for support. <laughs> the educator used yes. it. Yes. Um, so, yeah, definitely. We had a, a company that we'd worked with to get these licenses. And had I uh, chosen to tell them, hey, we're deploying this month. I'm going to need you guys available for support. Mm -hmm. Can you send someone in here to do some basic AutoCAD training? Can you come in here and test out the licenses on Monday before I go live on Tuesday? Had I taken time to plan and get a support team available, it would have been fantastic. Now, we would have delayed it a week because of problems that I had, but it would have been a fantastic deployment. Mm -hmm. Instead, it was a nightmarish month that I absolutely hated. So when introducing any new program, software, mm -hmm. initiative, whatever, make sure you have a support team. You know your resources. Yep. Not you know only it. the resources you need, but they have time to assist on it and have some specialty uh, uh, specialty in that area, mm -hmm. right? So you definitely have to have a support team in place. And I think it's important because you need a team. Mm -hmm. It's, I think, more well-received. Mm -hmm. If it's a team saying, hey, we really think this is a good idea versus yeah. 
me as the manager or right. whatever, even if I'm just the IT guy or whatever I am yep. coming in and saying, hey, we're going to do this yeah. and I'm going to take care of it. And it, so then you look like a person with a chip on the shoulder, yeah. like, oh, my gosh, he thinks he knows everything. He thinks this is going to be great. And it's not. Whereas if you've developed a team from mm -hmm. your own company and they all say, hey, we're here for you. We're going to yeah. do this and it's going to be great. Then it's. Yeah. It's received better. No, absolutely. And again, in hindsight, there were two engineers here that, that still knew AutoCAD really, really well. And, um, you know, just a little bit of background. Up to that point, I'd probably done two-thirds of all the AutoCAD work they needed. But there are a couple of other guys who are really proficient in it. And had I gone to them and said, I'm going to need some help with this. I'm going to need you guys to be available for the other 10 folks that are going to use this to kind of show them what to do. Maybe we could even do a little, a uh, little quickie training course uh, before we get all this done. They might've been annoyed that I asked them to take time out of their day, but a month later when they were kind of an integral part of this process, mm -hmm. it would have just, it would have done so much better for everyone. We mm -hmm. would have gotten people involved, you know, yep. engaging your people. Engaging your people. So, all right. So what's next? Communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm -hmm. I say it is hard to over communicate. But Darcy has a little bit of a different opinion. Well, go ahead and say okay. what you were saying. So you want to make sure that you have as many communi good communication channels as possible. So whether that's team meetings for a kickoff meeting, uh, worksheets on, on how-tos and so forth. Maybe you've got like a Google Docs page where you share things through. Maybe use a SharePoint or a network file share. Whatever it is, make sure you get as much information out there as possible. Meet with folks on a regular basis. Get feedback and communicate as much as you possibly can. It is hard to over-communicate, but not impossible. Yeah. So I disagree with the over-communication. I think as a communication is done correctly, then it is hard to over-communicate. So what's your example for our listeners? My example is school. We have three children in school. The oldest is in junior high in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So he has seven or eight teachers. Last year, I think he had eight because... One class was two days a week and the other was three days a week. Anyways, whatever. Right. Seven or eight teachers. And um, each one of those teachers sends an email every week. That's seven, seven emails, emails every week. The principal sends an email every week. Weekly emails. Eight weekly emails. Eight weekly for one child. Do they all come on the same day to make it easy to go through? Mm -mm. No. Okay. So no. it's just scattered. No. Okay. Um. I think they're all supposed to come by Sunday or Monday. Okay. But, you know, one might come on Friday, a couple might come on Saturday, a couple come on Sunday. Um, so then the principal also does a call-out voicemail for you yes. to listen to, which is basically reading you mm -hmm. the email that was already sent. Now, I have the little voice-to-text on my phone, mm -hmm. and it just quits translating after a while. Because the, e the voicemail mm -hmm. is so long. So yes. the voicemails are often three to four minutes from that principle. Okay. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Now, Kyle had asked about the emails the teachers send. The teachers' emails aren't very long, usually. They're just one to two sentences, but they each include two documents, two attachments. That you're supposed to open, print, review with your student, and add to their, you know, in-hand planner. That's a lot of work. It is. It's a lot of work when I'm trying to spend time with my family and I have two other children that need my time and attention yeah. as well. And I feel like it's stressful mm -hmm. and anxiety inducing to our junior high student <laughs> that, I you know, would agree. to to look at all this and say, well, here's what you have coming up. Now you, let's worry about this all week. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. You need to be prepared for things, but he's just kind of a kid. He's very smart mm -hmm. um, in this will likely, well, I don't want to say will likely, could end up to his detriment that he doesn't really have to study for things. He doesn't have to work hard to earn his grades. We've seen that a little bit. Yep. Um, so for us right now, there is no benefit right. to do all this. But I still get all the emails. Right. Well, that's something that uh, I, I do try with rollout of these programs is you don't want to communicate anything that's not necessary. See, sometimes there's like these uh, superlative type information, right? This is just 
optional good stuff to do, get if you need it. And that's what I mean. Like, if you got a SharePoint site or a Google Docs or a network share, whatever, you got somewhere to go put information, mm -hmm. put it out there and let people know if you need it, you can go get it. Right. So what, that's what I wish the schools would do. And I, I get it. They've got money that they can spend everywhere and so many great ideas and things that the kids need and the teachers need to do their job. I'm more patient with it because I understand what they're trying to do and they're trying to be helpful. Mm -hmm. I know that this is all coming from communicating with your stakeholders and mm -hmm. this, that, whatever. So then we have a fourth grader as well. This year, last year he had two teachers. They both send an email every week. This year, his two teachers are not sending weekly emails. Not sure if they're supposed to. I'm but we're not, not going to argue with I'm that. not saying any names. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not complaining either. But um, that should, you know. Again, but then the principal, the assistant principal, yeah. calls out and sends an email. Yeah. So I'm getting nine emails mm -hmm. and two phone calls a yeah. week from schools. And the district still sometimes does its own separate call out. The district does emails as well weekly like hey here's what's going on in the district they're doing a podcast themselves now mm -hmm. and you get you know i follow them on facebook so hey remember this episode is coming out you know it's yeah. just kind of it becomes information overload so then you just ignore it all because i i can't face any of this that's a, that's a good point point. and so. if anybody's on facebook there's been memes going around about this. Like, I'm going to have to quit my job so I can read my kids' emails. And somebody, you know, people will comment like, oh, and listen to the four-minute voicemail. So I know it's not just me. It's happening. Okay. So good lessons to learn here. Good lessons to learn here. Neither extreme is good. And as I've said before, I, that doesn't mean find somewhere in the middle for the Goldilocks approach. I hate that term. Mm -hmm. It's not a Goldilocks approach. It is get the pertinent, necessary information out the most uh, readily available, the most clearly. So like these emails and phone calls should be absolutely pertinent. You're going to run into problems if you don't. Mm -hmm. Communication. Everything else, here's the optional stuff. This is where you can go to get it. We'll have a training at this or we'll have a this at that, you know. Mm -hmm. That would be great. See, I didn't even know about the podcast that they have. Mm -hmm. You know, that would kind of be great to, to know about. Mm -hmm. So instead of including all of this. But see, then you, <laughs> I feel like I've hijacked your um, episode again to talk about <laughs> education. <laughs> but then it comes down to like, oh, well, I didn't know you had a podcast. Yeah. Well, we sent it out in the eight emails that come out every week. Why didn't you read it? Yeah. And I, you know, mm -hmm. so then they're frustrated. Yeah. Well, nobody's reading it because you send eight emails a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> well, I uh, had a, a chat with one of our team members this week and, you know, trying to trying to get to the root of, you know, why aren't we getting getting things done like we need to? And the response was, well, there's literally over 100 tasks that need to be done. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my fault. I, I made the same mistake. I just wrote, here's everything that could possibly be done. And my assumption was that they would pick and grab from what they wanted to work on and throw mm -hmm. that under their weekly schedule. But there was so much there that it became background noise. Mm -hmm. And I think we're running the same thing here. So don't do like I did with the AutoCAD deployment mm -hmm. and Really just say, hey, it's live. Here's where you go with one announcement. Yeah. But don't make the other mistake, which I've also made, and send out <laughs> so much communication mm -hmm. that it's background noise. And the quality of the communication yes. matters. Yes. And how you do it. So, all right, what's next? Okay. Next is find internal champions. Mm -hmm. I, so this is like your support team, kind yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't mean that these are your department supervisors. They shouldn't – they can, but they – should not automatically be assumed to be the champion for the program. Because, again, it's about knowing your resources mm -hmm. and your people. Yeah. Who's using it on a daily basis? Wouldn't it be great to have someone at each rank of the organization, you know, cheering it on, saying, this is great, to mm -hmm. rally their mm -hmm. peers around? Mm -hmm. So you got to have an internal champion. Mm -hmm. got to have it. More than one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, like I say, with this, just using the AutoCAD example for simplicity's sake is – you know, I had two guys that absolutely I could have and should have gotten involved from the get-go. But um, I just made the assumption that they had too much to do and, you know, wouldn't want to help with it. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could handle it all. So had I made that decision, life would have been a lot better. 
the next one. I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to hijack again. A suggestion in mm-hmm. looking for internal champions, maybe this is good, maybe not, you can tell me. Again, something the district does when they're looking for improvements, they have different committees. So, like the COVID response team, they wanted a committee of, you know, parents, business owners, teachers, mm-hmm. whatever, to sit and have meetings and talk about what to do. So they send out emails right. to everybody, everybody, right, and say, looking for a committee. If you're interested, submit your information here. We'll draw it. At, well, in this case, we'll draw it at random. Right. But could you not, as a company, send out an email, say, Hey, we're looking for some internal champions for this new initiative. If you're interested in being on, mm-hmm. you know, the team, mm-hmm. let me know. And then you can evaluate if they're a good fit for that team or not. No, I agree. I think that could be useful. At the same time, if you as leadership are communicating with your team more effectively, you can kind of have a, a good top-down communication and, you know, pass it down through, you know, through the levels of organization and make sure that they're talking about, hey, we've got a new program coming up, you know, in this case, regarding our, our AutoCAD solution. And we're looking for some folks that could take it on. This is something you'd be interested in. So you can have those same conversations. You can do email. It depends on the culture of your organization mm-hmm. as to what method's best, right? So like um, when I was doing health and safety, um, I got a uh, internal champion for face shields that I would not have expected. Um, this was literally the week that I told everyone you have to wear safety glasses in the shop at all times, no exceptions. That sounds like a no brainer, but it wasn't for, for these guys. Mm -hmm. And so that was pretty well received. They kind of understood that they got mad that they, you know, couldn't take it off here or there, but Mm -hmm. that was pretty well received. But then when I told them that they had to wear a face shield, if they were using a, uh, a grinder or a cutoff wheel. Mm-hmm. They didn't like that very much. They didn't want to have to wear that face shield because it gets dirty and scratched and it's something else to see through and it, you mm-hmm. know, fogs up and all this stuff. So that wasn't all that well received until the weekend shift. One of the guys was grinding and the cutoff wheel that he was using broke and it got embedded in his face shield and hit the outside of his safety glasses. Oh, wow. So needless to say, after that, I had a champion for PPE. <laughs> he understood. Everyone else understood. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally, I had that face shield. I kept it for like five years and I would to take it to a training. <laughs> yeah. So internal champions are huge. and They can come about from all sorts of weird ways, right? So don't, uh, don't limit your thinking there. All right. We got to move along. Well, I've kind of already moved into the next one, is you have to hold training events. Mm -hmm. you got to talk to people. You need some formal training. Now, does that mean everyone needs to come to the conference room and sit down and not necessarily? Um, My favorite way of doing these things was I would go down there um, at break. To the shop. Yeah, I'd just go down to the shop at break time. And so they, you know, whatever, they take two breaks and lunch. And so I just hang out with them during lunch or the break. And then as they were getting ready to go back to work, I'd be like, hey, hey, hang on, everyone. Hang on. Uh, let, me, let me talk for a minute. And that was it. And then by the time the signing sheet got passed around, I finished saying what I had to say and we moved on. So trainings don't have to be this super formal event. Mm-hmm. But you got to talk to people and you got to talk to them regularly. Again, yeah. That's the communication piece. Um, the last part is market it internally. So we talk about sales marketing on here for the outside world sometimes, <coughs> but you have to market it internally. You know, I talk about uh, quality is quality, you know, no matter where you go, but you can say the same thing for uh, for sales marketing. You got to sell your idea. Well, and that's where having internal champions come in because they will, they will market it for you. Yeah. So all of these, you know, these five really tie together well. So you got a support team that, that's in the back. They're probably not necessarily going to be your champions for the program. They're just the guys that are going to help make sure it all works. Um, and it's honestly a lot better if sometimes those are those are the leadership folks too because to see that leader helping out is great. But mm-hmm. so you got your support team. You communicate the program before it kicks off, while it's going, afterwards to see how it went. Um, you have that internal champion that, that's keeping everyone excited about the program. You're training folks on it, and all of that makes it really easy to sell the value to your team. I agree. I think there's some good steps. Cool. Thank you. (laughs) 
Thanks for listening, y'all. If you have enjoyed this episode, like what you heard, or took away something uh, good from it, be sure to comment and subscribe to the podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Android, Google, you name it, we're there. Feel free to connect with me directly on LinkedIn. You can find me there, Kyle Chambers, and we hope to hear from you soon.